Have you ever looked at an EQ plugin and just not understood what was going on? Not really known what to do to make it sound how you want it to? Well, you're not alone. Audio effects like EQ can be pretty confusing if you haven't used them very much. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to use the Channel EQ plugin in Mainstage to dial in commonly used sounds like pianos, pads, synth, and bass. Because EQ is a pretty universal audio effect, you'll be able to carry over this knowledge to other programs, softwares, and even hardware controls. In order to use EQ to its fullest potential, we'll want to first understand exactly what it does and what tools we have to use and how they work. EQ is short for equalization, which is the process of shaping and balancing different frequencies in an audio signal. Each instrument you hear has a unique mixture of frequencies that make it sound the way it does. We use EQ to cut out the frequencies that don't sound good and boost the ones that do. The channel EQ plugin that we are using in Mainstage is what's called a multi-band EQ. This means that all of the frequencies are divided into multiple sections so that we can more easily edit them. Then we're given what's called a frequency band for each section that we can use to manipulate those frequencies. In Mainstage, these bands are color coded, which makes it super easy to see what band you're using at any given time. Each frequency band has several parameters assigned to it. The frequency, decibel level, how loud or soft the band is, and Q value, how thin or wide the band is. You can manipulate these parameters by clicking and dragging up or down, or by typing in specific values. You can also manipulate each frequency band by clicking on the graphic display above. Now that we understand what EQ is and how it works, let's talk about some commonly used instruments and how to EQ them well. Probably the most commonly used instrument, especially in worship music, is the piano. So it's definitely worth it to know how to EQ a piano well. I wanna start by letting you know that there's not a single right way to EQ a sound, but I'll go over some tips and techniques that will help you dial in your sounds in a productive and concise way. So the first step for EQing a piano is to cut out all the low frequencies that are happening that you don't really wanna hear. So I'm gonna pull up an EQ plugin and go ahead and play a little bit to see where those frequencies lie. So you can see there's a lot happening down in the 80 to 200 range, but then there's even a little bit happening down below 80 hertz. Let me play that again. You can't always hear frequencies that are below 80 hertz or so, but whenever they mix in with other bass sounds and your kick drum that's playing in the band, it can muddy up the sound without you really knowing what's going on. So it's always a good idea to cut out those low frequencies if you know that you're not gonna use them. So I like to just take a low cut filter and put it right about 60 to 80 with a gentle curve. And then let's see what that looks like. So then the next thing I like to do is just analyze what frequencies are happening at any given time. And if it looks like there's a peak in any area, I like to just take a nice cut, a generous cut to that area. Usually this happens in the low mids because that tends to be where most of the muddy frequencies live. So you can see there's a lot more happening down in this range in this 300 to 800 versus up in the higher frequencies. So I'm just gonna take a frequency band, give a little bit of a cut here. Maybe even a little bit more. The next step that I would suggest is to find any problem frequencies that are sticking out in your mix. Sometimes this tends to be around the 1K to 2K range uh, where those frequencies just don't always sound good and sometimes they'll pop out higher than all the rest of the frequencies. Now, sometimes you might not have any trouble frequencies to cut out, so it's okay to skip this step, but definitely listen to your sound to make sure that if there is one that you identify it and cut. I think with this piano, I don't see anything that's really sticking out above the rest. So I'm gonna leave that good for now. The final step that I would suggest is to either boost or cut some of those high frequencies, depending on what you want your piano to sound like. If you want it to be brighter and stick out in the mix, I would suggest boosting those frequencies with a high shelf filter bringing that shelf up quite a bit. And I'm gonna overemphasize this just a bit so you can see what I'm talking about. If I put that right at about 3K, You 
you can see that sounds a lot brighter than before. So then if I wanted my piano to sound more mellow, I would cut out some of those frequencies. Again, I'm gonna bring that pretty low, lower than I normally would, just to demonstrate. Now for this piano, it's already pretty bright naturally. So I would probably leave this shelf just slightly down a couple dB and right around that 3K range because it is a pretty low slope. So this is what it would sound like. Now, like I said before, there are multiple ways that you can EQ your piano. There's not one right or wrong way. It all depends on what you want the outcome to be. So another approach would be to boost some of those higher frequencies to make your piano stick out in the mix. So I pulled up this other piano just to show you what the EQ looks like. It looks a little different. Here's what it sounds like. So many different kinds of pads out there. Warm pads, dark pads, bright pads, or thin and airy pads, and each one of these needs a different kind of EQ. This is where using EQ gets a little more subjective, so you can feel free to make some creative choices here, but I'll walk through the general process of what to look for when EQing a pad. The first step, and probably the most important step, is that you'll need to determine what you want your pad to sound like. You want it to be a warm pad, a bright pad, thin, there's so many options. So the pad that I've pulled up here is a warm pad. Let's take a look at what it sounds like with no EQ. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the EQ plugin so that you can see what frequencies are happening while I play this. So as you can see, most of the frequencies for this pad are living in that low to mid-low range. So it's definitely going to be important that we cut out some of those sounds, because like we said before, you can't always hear those frequencies that are in that lowest range. It's not necessary to have them there, they're just going to muddy up your mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by pulling that low cut filter up to about 80 or so, because there was a lot more happening in this pad. even bring it up more because as you can see there's this cluster of frequencies that's happening that are just so loud right there a good way to tell where to put that low cut filter is to look for these peaks in the frequencies as you can see i'll demonstrate it one more time you can see there's a peak and then a space and a peak and a space and that goes onward and upward as you continue throughout the frequency range. And so once you start to see those peaks, that's a good indication on where is a good place to put it because that's where the fundamental note starts. The next step would be to cut out some of the low mid frequencies. Most warm pads have a lot of lows and low mid frequencies, which is part of what makes them warm and feel the way they do. But again, this is where most of that muddiness lives, so we don't want to have too many frequencies happening in this range. So I'm just gonna give a small cut, maybe about there, and call that good. The next step would be to cut out any bright high frequencies that may be happening. Now with this pad, there's not a lot happening up there, so I'm not too concerned, but I will put a shelf cut here in the upper range, just in case anything were to pop through that uh, we wouldn't want to hear. Now, just like with the pianos, you'll want to make sure that you look for any problem frequencies. Pads can sometimes have frequencies that stick out even more prominently than pianos, just because of the way that the sound is made. So you'll want to make sure you really listen for that. So let's see what we have. It looks like there may be a peak around 1K that could cause some problems. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the mod wheel to see what other frequencies may be happening whenever it gets to a brighter point. It 
looks generally pretty even across the board, but I know that 1K is where a lot of those ugly frequencies like to live. And depending on the sound system that you play your sounds through, it may amplify that frequency uh, just naturally. So it's never a bad idea to put a little cut in that range. I'll just add that. I usually make this cut pretty thin. Here's what it sounds like with all of these EQ changes. thing to keep in mind as you're making these EQ changes is that while you're cutting some of these frequencies, it can allow for other sounds to live in that frequency range. You want to make sure your pianos and your pads and your lead sounds all fit really well together and then that that sound fits well with the rest of the band. Synth lead sounds vary in style and quality just like pads. So there's not a single right way to EQ these sounds because there are so many different types, but we'll take a look at a few different lead sounds. Just like with pads, you'll want to determine what this lead should sound like. Is it warm? Is it bright? Does it cut through the mix? Does it hide behind other sounds? So I've gone ahead and picked a lead sound that does cut through the mix to show you how to EQ a sound like this. So depending on the part that you're going to play with a lead sound, you'll want to definitely learn the range for that part so that you can determine what notes will be played. And this will inform your EQ decisions. So let's just say that I am playing this part in my right hand and it sounds something like this. <laughs> So it really doesn't get lower than 200 hertz and it goes up to about 4K. And if I bring the brightness up with the mod wheel, let's see what that changes. So the low range for this part does not go any lower, but it does bring in a lot more high frequencies. So if I were to sustain this. Yeah, you can see a lot of frequencies happening up there. And I also saw some low frequency action happening down in this 20 hertz range. So again, we'll want to make sure that we cut out all of those low frequencies that aren't going to be used because just in case they pop up, we don't like to hear them. So I'm gonna put this low cut, a little over 200 hertz. Now, because this sound does use a lot of high frequencies when the mod wheel is up, we don't wanna cut out too many frequencies up there just in case we do want that to stick out. So I'm going to leave the high frequencies how they are. Now, I am definitely going to cut out around 1K just because, like I said, we know that there are many, many times that this frequency sticks out in the mix, especially when you play your sounds into a sound system, uh, this can amplify this frequency really easily. So let me play this again. Might even cut a little bit more. Now, sometimes with bright lead sounds, there can be other high frequencies that don't sound super great or sound really nasally. And a good way to tell where these frequencies live is by boosting them slightly, just to hear what they sound like and then cutting to see what the sound sounds like without them there. So let's boost this high mid range to hear how gross this sound is. So that's really nasally. I'm gonna just bring that down and give it a good wide band. And it doesn't really change the quality of the sound, uh, but it will reduce some of those gross frequencies that may stick out later. The last thing that I would do is use the high cut to cut out some of the frequencies, probably about above 10K, uh, just because those frequencies aren't really that pleasing to the ear. So it is a good practice to do this, just like it is with the low frequencies. Bass sounds are unique in that they most often live in the lowest frequency range, but usually they have a little bit of high frequency content as well. Let's take a look at a few bass patches. So if I were to play something like this, you can see in our EQ plugin that there is a mountain of frequencies happening down in this like 40 to 60 
hertz range. That's pretty common for bass sounds. They'll usually have a lot happening down there. Just like with our other sounds, we wanna make sure that there's not too much happening because if you go to mix your sounds with a bass guitar, those frequencies will fight and not sound good. So because we are not the bass guitar, uh, we do want to make sure we cut out those frequencies as well. So I like to put my low cut anywhere from 60 to 80. Uh, and I may adjust that later, depending on how it sounds mixing with other instruments. So you can see it takes away some of that boominess to the sound, but it leaves the character of the bass, which is important. So I'm gonna bring it up just a tiny bit higher. The next thing that I would do is to put a small cut between 100 to 300 hertz. With bass sounds and really low frequencies in general, they can build up in that range and really make your sound uh, muddy if you're not careful. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that centered right about 200 and let's see what it sounds like. Maybe even a little bit more. Then the last step that I would do is to identify any problem frequencies that are happening up in the higher range. Now, usually there won't be any uh, when your mod wheel is all the way down, but if there is some brightness to be added to the bass sound, you'll want to make sure that you increase that mod wheel uh, to make sure that you find those frequencies. So here's what it sounds like. Now, luckily with this sound, there's really not any problem frequencies. It looks like the frequencies uh, taper off pretty nicely. There's nothing sticking out to me that sounds bad. As you can see, EQ is an invaluable tool that stands in the gap between being heard and getting lost in the mix. Knowing how to EQ your sounds is a skill that doesn't take long to master and can really help to take your sounds to the next level. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button so that more people can see this video and gain these skills too. Get subscribed to our channel so you don't miss out on any of the free content we put out each week. I'm Julia with Sunday Sounds and I'll see you next time.